How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to review the International Transtar 4070A I'll just call it the Transtar um, Yeah, we'll get stuck in, we'll have a look see how she stacks up against the others So uh, first things first, the engines obviously going for the bottom one as usual It's on S Plus I believe on the power though which is nice to see Obviously that can be like very lightweight as well uh, Gearbox I'm going for the high range, for now I do use a bit of the off-road There is no suspension so it's obviously just stock and uh, as for the tyres the biggest size is 39 inch I believe it is and yeah to put that in perspective the Lowe's got 33 inch tyres and I believe they're the smallest in the game so 39 isn't that big at all for a truck the Tager's got 51 inch tyres so yeah it does make a difference uh, the winch I went for the advanced medium I think it is the spare wheel goes on the side of the chassis so I don't usually put it on when it's like that and then uh, yeah as for all the add-ons now you can have just about everything I think except uh, the like seismic vibrator module thing you can have a crane and a flatbed which is pretty decent for like the kind of truck chassis that it is and then the snorkel it's got like a massive snorkel on it it even goes like sort of noticeably above the roof and then yeah, exhaust is only a stock exhaust, so I can't change that anyway. As for adding stuff on the roof, I've got like the chrome parking lights, double horns. Like I said, I was I was rich, rich for a day. Uh, stuck a little flat cap sort of thing on him. As for the rear bumper, I can't take the like mud flaps or anything off, which I would if I could. But it's not the end of the world. But yeah, I'd rather. Uh, as for the rooftop, you got like a tit on your head in the middle uh, oh I think that's the chrome parking lights or factory parking lights so yeah that's all then there is no uh, fog lights like roof bar things or anything like that and then as for the bumpers obviously that one sits pretty low and these are different bumpers you got one of them I think has got fog lights on it but that's the stock one I can't make the camera go any lower because this is actually quite a small low slung truck I can't make the camera go lower but yeah looking through them all is definitely the stock one is the winner really that one's not like if I had to choose one that wasn't stock I'd choose that one with the fog lights on it but yeah that one definitely wins and like already it's because of the smaller tyres and no raised suspension it's pretty low to the ground anyway so I certainly wouldn't recommend making it even worse than that alloys is pretty big selection of alloys I think they usually is when it's just pretty standard tyres but yeah, went for a sort of slightly older looking set this time. As for all the colours, looks pretty cool in black. It reminds me of the uh, Terminator 2 truck that he flies off the bridge. I know it's not the same or anything. As for the colours, the red, I do quite like that. You see, because of the look of the truck, I, like I'm not saying I would choose that one, but I don't think it looks that bad. The same with that, I don't mind that it's quite a pale blue. And yeah, I don't even like, especially that one as well. I do quite like that green and white more than like if that was on the cat ct680 it would look completely wrong but yeah I went for uh, red and white at the minute I think it might have been like that when I found it as for looking outside though if you can see like compared to the size of the driver in the cab it is a pretty small truck and it does sit pretty low and stuff really obviously I appreciate it's a highway truck but yeah that's just like it is pretty small <laughs> that's definitely not what she said uh, looking around the mirror, it's a pretty decently sized mirror to be honest considering the truck. Uh, I can actually just about see like stuff out of it. I, I've got a back window though so I can see my tyres, that's all I'd really want to be honest. As for that mirror, I can stare forward and I can still just see the tyres. If I could remove those mud flaps though, it'd be better. But yeah, again, stick my head out the window, I can see. That's the horn, not too bad, it's not horrible, it's not the best but not really any complaints. When I start it up it's like obviously you got your red rev needle and then there's two white needles that spin round and set at certain points and it's like as you can see now when I'm revving it I go up to about that first needle and later on um, I'm looking inside and I rev it and I went up to like the second white needle so I don't really know what that's about it's almost like visible rev limiters maybe it's something on the truck in real life not like just rev limiters like that but I don't know maybe I have no idea to be honest but I've never noticed that on any other truck and uh, yeah when I was in neutral there it revved up to 1500 but I managed to get it to rev higher yeah during like 
gameplay in that tonight, so I don't know. I don't think I've ever noticed any other truck that I can't rev as high in neutral just sat there but than I can in total. I have to say, considering how small the truck is and the tyres and all the rest of it, that um, trailer wasn't actually sat that far into the ground. It was up to like the alloys and stuff, maybe a tiny bit into the alloys, but all things considered, it does kind of sit slightly no lower, <laughs> lower on its nose, so it's kind of got... I can't remember it's called positive or negative rake, but yeah, it does kind of, because it sits like the back is getting higher than the front, I suppose that trailer was, uh, yeah, it's the, sort of the best case scenario as far as that trailer sticking out of the ground is concerned. So along all the dirt roads and the stuff, it does tick along all right. Obviously stuff like this though just absolutely nails it, even though I'm in low now. I mean stuff like this is partly why... I'm going to put an off-road box in it for some bits, and to be honest, even when I was doing this tonight, some bits I wasn't happy with, some I was, and it was like, I'm in an hour and whether to say cut bits like this out, but it's a trans-style review, I may as well like put it through the test, if it does bad, it does bad, but um, yeah, in my personal gameplay, I take this out for a little lap every now and then. To be honest, I didn't use it a whole lot at all until uh, when Jeff told me about the Jeff Special and I could go flying up and down the runway and all sorts. I did start using it more because the highway trucks are like pretty much the easiest to do the Jeff Special. Like you don't even necessarily have to wait until it's in eighth gear. Just stick it in high range when you're in like seventh or eighth, and you'll get yeah like a Jeff Special speed boost. Um, as you can see, what I did there, I ended up just winching out of it and driving around the side. Just because that's what I would do in real life, or I'd just start winching to stuff. So even driving up here, it was going fine. This boggy bit here does actually catch quite a few trucks out. I don't really get stuck in it. You wouldn't get stuck in it in like a Tager, but it would slow you down. But yeah, this thing, I did get through it, but it did take me like a good 30 seconds a minute of revving. I did nail one tree though, which I was pretty happy with, because I didn't have high hopes for it. But I kept some nice sort of speed and momentum down the hill, so definitely helped the situation. And as for going around here, I mean, it's one of them again because it's a highway truck. Obviously, the biggest major issue or whatever is, like, it hasn't got all-wheel drive. So with those front wheels, they're just, like, shopping trolley wheels or something. Like, yeah, they're not... If anything, they're, like, worse <laughs> because you're trying to shove them through the mud. And they're not, uh, yeah, doing a lot to help out. The fact that this thing hasn't got any lockable diffs either is... Like, and I do like this for flying down the road, and I'll show you a bit of gameplay on the road and that, because obviously it is more of a highway truck. But yeah, it's like, it just can't handle off-roading, really. Certainly not boggy stuff like this. Like, the dirt roads and things like that are not that bad if you on a snowy map and you come across a bit of snow you might crawl through slowly and stuff but yeah it's like I certainly just it doesn't really offer me any reason to take it again if I had road like missions to do it would be a good one but once I've done a mission I'm on the other side of the map probably and it's like then what am I gonna do and I don't like preferably I don't want to get to a point where I now can't do something I've decided I want to do because I'm in the wrong truck that can't go here and there and wherever. But yeah, as for suspension, like driving along the road and hitting into these rocks and that, it's not too bad. You take the odd bit of damage. If anything, I'd say the engine is the more sensitive one. It's like even if I just clip the barrier now going along, it'd uh, usually take engine damage. I hit that anti-terrorist barricade. I appreciate they're just way over the top at the minute, but it did delete about three quarters of my suspension. Engine took a decent hit. Um, and yeah, like this is only a tiny bit of gameplay through here. I appreciate it's got clap suspension, but I've been through here, like, and I've been through the bits of mud. It can't go through mud very well. That's me pulling with a winch on a tree. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I certainly wouldn't attempt it through here. I wouldn't bring it if I knew I had to cross here. So instead, though, I've just got a bit of gameplay now because um, of like driving along a road with a big trailer. Thought it was about to be Terminator 2 time. Splitting like a cryogenics trailer in half. Um, yeah, we're all good though. Driving along on the road, obviously, 
that is what this thing is potentially made for and it does drive along pretty nicely when it's got a trailer on it it I would say suit not only suits it better one thing this with this truck is it doesn't weigh a lot it's particularly not at the back end like any weight there is is at the front really it's not as front heavy and springy on its suspension as like the Zix but there's definitely I would say more weight at the front so say when I was driving through that mud a minute ago there's nothing pushing down on the back end to really dig in and actually give you some grip when you've got a trailer on obviously it does shove your back end down more and that allows it to like it just feels like it handles a bit better and even though it's S plus on the power and it doesn't weigh a lot so it's like I say, it's a bit of a misleading, like, pointless way to display the info on this sort of game. If you're talking a racing game, power to weight is pretty important. And I'm not saying it's completely meaningless with trucks, but, you know, a, a seriously big fucking heavy truck that's got a lot of power versus a really tiny little lightweight truck that has got the same power to weight, it doesn't necessarily mean they're even going to be close together on what they can haul and all sorts. So... Yeah, whereas a Bugatti and an Aerial Atom are kind of... I don't know if they're similar power to weights, but hypothetically, they're not going to be silly far off, but one weighs sod all, one is a hypercar, so... Yeah, it's just like, it's... There's sort of more to it than that. Once you've got the trailer on the back, though, at least it... I, it doesn't feel like it becomes a completely gutless truck. I have to say, I think this trailer is pretty reasonable for a giant fuel trailer I think the smaller like fuel add-on on the back it seems to weigh more than this trailer uh, yeah a little drift around there but I mean the steering if if I could turn it up and make it like five ten percent faster steering I would but it's not horrible or it doesn't really feel delayed it's just a little bit slow but again with the trailer on I'm not flying down the road and it still picks up decent enough speed with a trailer on you can see there though stuff like that that um, I don't know really it's kind of like this is an off-roading game and yet this is a highway truck so it's already at a disadvantage as it is and it's like with things I'm not really necessarily bothered if I don't have raised suspension specifically but with how low the front bumper sits and the fact that it's got smaller tyres is like, as you've seen there when I went into that river, I clipped the nose and yeah, it's kind of like, what do I get back then for that sort of disadvantage and I reckon a dolphin could just be pulling this same tank now along all the roads just fine, but then if I get to an off-road bit, I can go off-roading. I got a bit squirrely there and that was partly on me but I would say if the steering was a bit quicker I probably could have just got out of that and missed the post <laughs> once I hit that terrorist barricade like bam pulled me to the left and I hit that post to its credit and I will say it ain't bad for this because I have crashed it quite a lot tonight it doesn't roll very easily at all it definitely would rather sit on its wheels which is a good thing and obviously, you can get lucky and unlucky when I just crashed into that post as well. It could have flipped, but yeah, like I say, I've crashed it quite a lot tonight, and it doesn't mean it's impossible to roll or not land on its wheels, but I'd say it's in the better half of the ones that do and don't. As you can see, though, I've took quite a lot of energy damage. I admit, I did go pretty fast headfirst into a post with a pretty big trailer kind of giving me some momentum to seriously plough into it but yeah like it's the engine that usually takes the hits first the suspension is either like one damage off being dead <laughs> or it's got no damage to be honest I would guess it's probably dead by now like I say that it shrinks the screen when I'm recording so I can't quite tell but yeah apart from that I mean this is dirt roads it's driving along decently enough if I, again, if I had a mission where I knew I was at the garage, oh, I've got to go over there and do something, I wouldn't mind taking this, or if I was in another vehicle and I just rolled it and it's like between me and the garage is a road, I could get a maintenance trailer on this and just go flying down there. Uh, I believe you might be able to have, yeah, a van body add-on on this as well, so in the right situation it is 
usable, but that's just the sort of thing where it's like there's plenty of off-road stuff that is perfectly usable on the roads as well. So, unless it, to me, unless it does something pretty special on the road, it's like, why would I put all my eggs in one basket of like, it's good on the road, but it struggles in a lot of other places. Going through there, I mean, once the tyres started churning up that mud a bit, it just didn't have the uh, guts to it. It was pretty happy. I mean, look at that. Kiss the wall, one damage. I like a bit of, bit of stuff like that. So going down there, I mean, there's no way around it. It's pretty slow. I edit, edited it to... I did two goes of this, and I just switched from the first go to the second. Uh, as you can, I already sort of drove through it and knocked one or two of the trees down, which really slow it down. I've also got the off-road gearbox on now, so I'm in high-low. And again, I mean, it's not doing particularly terrible. If I brought all the trucks here and turned all-wheel drive off, they'd probably do about the same, but... Especially with no diffs either, or uh, no all-wheel drive. Uh, yeah, it's not too happy through there. And because of the smaller tyres and the bumper, I mean, it just wasn't going to get over that barrier. So I lined all three highway trucks up. You can see from the bumpers, the Transtar is pretty damn low to the ground. GMC's got a nice, decent bit of height to it. So is the uh, Ford, really. Like, I believe the Ford was still able to get its bumper over the barrier. That Transtar just hasn't got a chance at that, which kind of, yeah, fair enough. Like... I can live with just not getting over barriers, but sort of, yeah, that same theory applies to a lot of things in this game. Getting up like awkward little ledges of rocks and all sorts is, uh, yeah, the bumpers are going to come into play first, and there ain't big tyres to climb over stuff, really. And there's not that front wheel drive to try and pull its front end up and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's being pushed from the back, and the back weighs subtle if you haven't got a trailer on. I suppose this is a good example with the weight. Like, I mean, it was definitely pretty slow going along here, but as soon as I hit them that tree, and I believe that grey bloody bush, um, yeah, it just stopped me because I've not got enough weight still slamming down into the ground to actually dig in and keep going. And again, sadly, it's sort of beached on its way up. So I had to, uh, yeah, stick the winch on the back, put it to that lamp post, just to try and drag my back end lights so those that first set of rear axles can get on there. But you see, now I'm trying to reverse, obviously with full lock on, to bring my front end round to the left. There's no power in those wheels, so yeah, it, it just sort of pulled me backwards and didn't really dig in on the front and swing my nose round. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to sound like I'm ragging on this thing. There is things to it I enjoy, so I'm not just hating on it as a truck, but as far as these tests go, this really isn't made to pass these tests. Um, I mean, when I drove off that rock, no front-wheel drive, so I couldn't grip, like, pull with my front end and get myself off. <laughs> That's what she said. And uh, when I just crashed into them pipes, obviously the bumper and between the smaller tyres and the bumper, it wouldn't even bump its way up at first. It just smashed into the pipes and stopped dead. So I did the winch trick to the back of my truck onto that tree, got myself over. Just, I suppose it's a little bit unlucky, I just landed like, I got out of there pretty easily, but yeah, it's kind of blocked between the tree and the uh, wall. And then going through the trees, I cut most of it out, because honestly, you just seen there where I already had the front end through the trees and something was still stopping it. So I had to put the winch again onto a tree in front of me and do it that way. I mean, at least going up this little first bit, it didn't try and tip over or anything like that, which is a... Uh, that is a good point to it, that it doesn't tip very easily. Uh, yeah, got some cargo on doing the turning test. I wouldn't say it's anything to write home about, but it's not bad. It's about the same as, like, yeah, the ANK, the White Western Star. I mean, 60-70% of the trucks all turn at about that, which is nice. It's enough. It'll do. So next up, coming to this bit, and obviously I'll say I didn't really have high hopes at this point. I have again got the uh, off-road gearbox in because in normal play, if I'm honest, I'd go with the high-range gearbox because I can't 
sacrifice how nice the high range gear is in the high range gearbox. Um, I just wouldn't bring this truck on this kind of terrain, so it's not something where I need the most suitable gearbox. Like I'd try and stick to roads with this thing, or I'd bring another truck and just winch it through places like this. But it actually did a bit better than I thought. I drove to the first bit and it started going pretty slow. Eventually it did get stuck, but it got further than I thought before it did. And uh, yeah, maybe like if they added at least diffs, it'd help. Because obviously without diffs, there's only got to be one of your four rear wheels that is kind of not really gripping a lot. And because the power kind of follows the path of least resistance, it just goes to the wheel that... It's free to, yeah, <laughs> They're like, there's nothing acting on it really, so you can bleed a lot of your power really without this. And again, not re to really hate on it, but in some ways, like, this truck is underrated. Again, in some ways, I'm, I slightly do it myself because I know that it isn't very good off-road and all the rest of it. I kind of like sometimes like well, I'll just not bother with it at all. And then like when I took it out the other day for that um, food delivery contest on uh, Smithville, it did better than I thought in that test. And I, I believe I did it once or twice on that test. And um, yeah, I didn't think it was going to make it at all, and it did. And it's like there is certain places and certain maps where it isn't that bad, but Obviously, these tests I've kind of built up now on the reviews is certainly more, you know, testing, like, the limits of off-roading. And, yeah, this <laughs> this ain't a limits of off-roading kind of truck. I mean, it'll get you there eventually. Like, again, going through that water. I mean, I am in the low-range gearbox, so if I was in the high range, it would have pushed through that water a bit nicer, but... I still think because it doesn't weigh a lot and again it's not sitting like on the ground really well and all the rest of it it's uh, I don't think it'd absolutely fly through that water but yeah you certainly do pay pay a top end um, top end speed price with the uh, off-road gearbox so I was a little bit late on doing the interior view but I just drove up that hill it was only because I actually had a feeling it wouldn't get up the hill so I was kind of waiting to attach a winch before I bother with the uh, interior view. I mean, to be fair, the window sits nice and low. The horizon certainly no problem at all. But, I mean, there's good views all around. I can see what my tyres are up to. So that's all I can ask for, really, in the low range. Even, I suppose, the window goes quite nice and high as well. So if you just tip in back down over a hill. I remember, um, was it the Ford Clip 9000 with the like <laughs> Japanese sun visor thing on? Like a little Japanese bandana. Yeah, you couldn't see, like, very high up sort of thing. So once your nose was tipping down, you'd lose sight of the horizon, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, this one's not bad. I certainly can't complain. Again, if I was doing a road-type mission and I wanted to do some interior gameplay, I, uh, I'd i consider this. But again, it'd have to be either all road or really, like dirt roads. I mean, maybe if there's one little patch of mud, it's like, yeah, cool, I'll just struggle through it or winch through it or whatever, and I'm I'm good to go, but it still comes back to that same point that, you know, a Dolphin, a Tega, a Voron, Grad, they're all going to do what this can do driving along the road, basically, but I just have that versatility. If I decide I'm now just going to go flying across some mountainside or whatever, like this thing, it just ain't, ain't going to happen. I mean, it got through there. It didn't catch its bumper. If I was in the high-range gearbox, I believe it probably would have got fast enough to hit its bumper. But if I had the high-range gearbox, I think it would have took me twice as long to even get here. So, in the long run, <laughs> I made a decision. And, uh, yeah, I think I was best off sticking with the off-range. I actually just stayed in auto along here. The thing is, I will say, that also kind of negates the point of the off-road... There is no diffs I'm gaining or anything or all-wheel drive when I put it into low range. I'm still just, yeah, rear-wheel drive with no diffs. So, leaving it in auto didn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference there. And I'm not saying that means that the low ranges will never come in handy, because they do, but... 
I also found with this a lot tonight, I was using like the medium low, which I get on the higher range anyway. I was quite happy that it got up uh, that like little rock ledge because I don't know if I got a bit of a lucky angle and it just kind of got, but it got up, so I can't knock it for that. The back end, however, wasn't getting up at first and I reversed a bit and moved over to the right where I reckon the ledge was a little bit, just a little bit of a better angle as I was approaching and um yeah, I got up then after like a second or something, so not the end of the world. The biggest issue for me, like, would I bring it along this rock bridge again? Like, I could handle getting this over the rock bridge again, but I just, I wouldn't drive it to this point. There, there'd be no reason why I'd really want to bring this to here. I mean, one way it might be quite a good truck as well. I know I did the fuel trailer earlier. Um, if you had a fuel add-on, even though it's heavy, I don't know, yeah, that's the thing. The fuel add-on kind of wrecks it for itself a bit. I had it on the Voron the other day, and uh, the Voron AE does hold that fuel add-on quite well. I mean, it. I think when you add it, it bottomed out the suspension, but then it kind of lifted back up a bit after that. I mean, here, I'm going to leave it about here, but it's just not having any of it. I started winching to the pipeline and dragging myself along that way. Again, cutting across this mud, or snow, sorry. I'll just leave it to the last bit. I was winching on that tree. It was having none of it. I mean, maybe I might have been going like 0.1 of a mile an hour and if I sat there for 10 minutes. But yeah, I mean, there's no, you're never, never going to do that. Uh, so again, just wanted to do a bit more road gameplay since it's kind of what this truck is all about. I mean, it's motoring up through the gears pretty nicely, which some off-road trucks and some other trucks, you know, don't do so well once you've got a semi-trailer and it's fully loaded. So at least, at least this thing has got, like, S-plus power in it. It isn't purely lightweight that's giving it that S-plus thing. It's like, there is a bit of engine power to it, definitely. I mean, it drove nice around there. It does sweep in bends quite nice. Again, that's where... The steering is a little bit slow, but I kind of get why, and it's like, it does make faster corners a bit more sweeping and that, and it, um, yeah, in some ways it can help, but that was a little bit on me there. I kind of, I let off and I steered into it, and uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have steered into it as much, but still, did a little drift, I mean, it's still held up nicely, it didn't hit them rocks sideways and try and flip immediately or anything like that. So if I had to have a mission where I had to f fly something from my garage down to this port or if I was messing around and I left the trailer at this port and I just needed to fly something from the garage down here to grab it and take it back, yeah again I'd consider this. Well I have done that before with this, it's those sort of situations where I kind of find an excuse to drive this thing and again it's nothing I don't hate this truck at all it's like the one thing that helps with this truck I'd say is like compared to the Derry Longhorn it's 180 grand and it's supposed to be a beast and it's not whereas this thing has never tried to claim it's a beast it's not priced like a beast it says it's a highway truck so you already know it isn't going to be great off-road so it's not trying to be anything it isn't Whereas the Derry is just disappointing compared to what that should be. In real life it's a beast and in this game it isn't and it should be. And it's a waste of truck that it's not. I mean he made it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. I just jumped off there with a the trailer. Why not? But it floats. Floats from the front. And because um, it's got a pretty tall snorkel, I mean it doesn't help as far as driving in water goes because the front floats. But in that situation I did float back up. And I would be able to winch to something. If there was something around, there's not really any winch points on that dock. But I mean, getting to this point, the mud test, it made it for the first little bit. And then it was just like, no. I'm now winching to the trees, pulling myself along. Again, if I was going to take this truck, I'd never take it down that route anyway. But if I was, I'd already accept before I even set off. I'm going to be winching it along the left-hand edge. So next up the snow test. Trying to make, way, make my way up the mountain. I was thinking now, I hope it's not this slow the whole way. Trying the low ranges. And uh, 
time, yeah. Let's say because that front's not powered and there's a cab sitting over the front wheels, it's just... I mean, if you grabbed a big long piece of wood that's four foot long and you're grabbing it on one end and you're trying to lift the other end, like it's going to be a hell of a lot harder than if you just grabbed it in the middle and lifted it, so... It's that kind of... I don't know. I did something about it in physics. I mean, what was it? Point of equilibrium? Point of momentum? I can't remember. <laughs> I've never used any of that shit since I left school, to be honest. I stayed on. Did sixth form and everything, but... Did maths, chemistry, physics and business. Don't do it to yourself, trust me. I mean, yeah, going up here, I had to get myself a goddamn horse or a vehicle. Attach a loaf. Attach a loaf to anything. And things get better. I mean, the loaf got it up there, no problem. I didn't give it much of a nose test because I knew it wasn't going to do a lot with a pretty small wheels and a low bumper. And I mean, well, it did a bit better than I thought up here, to be honest. I appreciate it's going to get beached on odd bits and stuff, but all things considered, like. I certainly wouldn't recommend bringing it up to these mountains, and I wouldn't personally choose it if I wasn't reviewing it. But again, I know that... It was just before I got to the rolling bit, but it was a pretty nice example of... I rolled, not on purpose, but it landed on its wheels and it stayed... stayed upright, which is pretty good. I mean, now I don't have to go and bring anything to rescue it. But this is obviously the normal rolling spot. And yeah, it was close, but the length of that hill, smaller vehicles have already done a full roll and they've still got a bit to go. And again, it's a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Saves the day as usual. To be fair, I mean, I wasn't ever worried that it wasn't going to. Not just because it's a goddamn professional, but the Transtar doesn't really weigh a lot. I mean, I tried getting up this hill. It's just them front axles. It just wouldn't go because... Yeah, I mean, as soon as obviously it's pushing from the back, as soon as the front starts lifting up, it lifts your inside rear axle up, and now you've only got one set of axles, and without diffs, you bleed a lot of power to that inside axle. As you can see, I mean, again, it's kind of like, I didn't think it was going to stand a chance, but it actually got up there fairly well. I did have to kind of scoot over to the left quite a bit, and yeah, it was by no means a smooth, nice, easy run. But it did get up there, which... I still re still realise this thing is punching above its weight when it's off-roading anyway, so... I certainly wasn't... wasn't expecting miracles. Got about bogged down here and I kind of gave up. I mean, there's no point. It's, it's not good off-road, <laughs> so... You see, though, with a trailer on the back, it seems like it's doing a bit better. Because it's now finally got some weight to, uh, yeah, push it down enough to get some grip. I swear that tree on the right then looked like it was bloody pregnant. You go back and have a look at that. <laughs> it's right, beast. <laughs> Unless it was just me, but I'm telling you. Something did not look right about that. Like it, it ate some other trees or something. Again, through here... Not great, but I wasn't attaching a winch so far. It made it to this point. Put it in medium low. Yeah, there's no diffs to engage or anything, so it's not. It was just that slow all the way through. If that, I did. In fact, no. When I got near a bit further up, I did winch to something and just pulled the truck forward. I mean, it's nice that it drives down the quarry a bit okay, but. There's that little problem of uh, getting to the quarry first. Although there is other ways into the quarry without having to drive through that muddy bit. That's probably one of the worst ways into the quarry. I just purposely go that way, obviously. Give them a bit of a test. I mean, it got down there all right. I've ne never really been worried all night about it rolling. If, it, if I'm going to roll it, I probably would have rolled most things. See, and I think if I didn't have a trailer now, I reckon it would have struggled even more there, but... That did help. I had to grab myself a loaf. I mean, I was down here. I grabbed the um, concrete blocks or slabs, whatever they are. I was just able to reach that post, though, with, like, and put the winch in the middle. And because I was kind of 
yeah, it was trying to straighten the truck and the trailer out. It just, yeah. <laughs> I knew it'd work. I knew it'd uh, start making me drive forward a bit. And it actually got to this point, sort of on its own. Been a bit of a dick with a winch. That's not really this thing's fault. When you're close to the limit of what you can winch to, every now and then the game just decides, like, nope, you now can't winch to that. And you see, then it's things like this where it's like, just about ready to write it off and I was thinking yeah it ain't got a goddamn chance of getting up here or even the first bit I mean and then it did and I didn't even need to use a winch to not tip or yeah and then I got up the second bit and I admit about now I wasn't even messing around I was like yeah I'm banging a winch on that's what I do in real life but the fact that it even drove up to there was more impressive than I thought, especially that that is concrete slabs and everything. But you see, that's where it's one of those funny trucks where, because the concrete slabs are even heavier, I've now got even more weight pushing my back end in, and because all the power gets sent to the back end, that does give you a good boost in applicable power that can actually stick to the floor and make you go forwards rather than just wheel spinning. I mean, yeah, one of the things that is going to make it suffer up here, because there is no front-wheel drive, my front end's just going to swivel around, like, as it pivots on the, uh, like, the rear axles with the trailer. But I'd already prepared a loaf, and, uh, yeah, all in all, I mean, I believe that was unedited from when I set off, stuck a winch on this, loaf got me up there, absolutely no problem at all, and then I stuck a loaf, to, uh, stuck a loaf, <laughs> stuck a winch onto that tree and I'm up. So it certainly didn't make it up this hill on its own and it wouldn't but if for some reason I had to use this truck or I forced myself to use this truck and a loaf and I had to drag this up there, I mean you've, for any of you that have seen the other bits that I've done in the other videos there's a lot of trucks that I would say are better than this truck that struggled more up that hill and the, even the first couple of quarry hills. I mean, that's where the Derry Longhorn <laughs> it couldn't even get up the first bloody hill. It got up the hill, first hill once when the loaf pulled it up. So, yeah. I mean, that's where, again, this thing's 60 grand fully upgraded or whatever. The Derry's 180, 190. It's like, this is a third of the price. And that does make a difference. I mean, particularly that I've got the off-road gearbox in. Obviously, my high range isn't as rapid as usual. So I didn't go flying down that hill. It did catch its bumper in as I turned off the hill. And I believe it made my cargo unpack as well, but... Yeah. I mean, that would be my recommendation again. <laughs> Don't really take it off-roading unless... Unless there's not a lot. And slash or you've got some spare time on your hands. Or just take another vehicle. No, I don't just mean take just another vehicle. Like, take another vehicle with it. So if and when it... Gets to a point that it's not going to make it, yeah. Just tag the other vehicle in. Get it through, like, the off-roading bit. And then carry on. I mean, as for the ice, it doesn't weigh a hell of a lot. So, and it's not... I don't, there's, there is more weight at the front, but it's not like really nose heavy or anything like that. And I kind of find it odd with this ice, as in some vehicles like a loaf weighs a lot less than a Tager, but vehicles that have got cert certain tyres seem to get more of a bonus on the breakable ice than the weight of the vehicle itself. Like I sort of found with this game, it could just be me, but a vehicle could be five times heavier than another vehicle, but have mud tyres that are twice as wide, and it'll do better on the ice, whereas really, five times the weight, twice the area to spread it over, it's the heavier vehicle would go through, you would assume, but I mean, it's not necessarily a complaint, it's just what I think I've noticed with the mechanics of that breakable ice. So, flew off there, I believe I did a Jeff special and uh, hoofed it a little bit. I mean, it hit its nose, but it didn't actually completely nail it. Going again, stick it into high range. That's the old Jeff special. 
I mean, look at it. It deleted the engine pretty bad there, and bam, and that absolutely deleted the gearbox and the engine. That's right, I was pretty happy with myself. Also, it would have been nice if I perfectly landed in the trailer. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I got that. That's a nice car. Got any aviation fuel for sale? Sorry. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. That might be regulation dolphin distance. Let's measure it. A glitch. Computer couldn't handle it. Floor again. Oh, yes. I mean, I hit it, but... I wasn't too sure, so fancied flying a Tega, squirrelling around like mad because it's not I've not got the chain on it. <laughs> oh post, fuck you. <laughs> Some chassis flex. I admit. I would have preferred it if it had hit the uh, Transstar too. But I did need a truck down here because I wanted to do this. Move it nearer the cliff just a little bit and move it a little bit better back onto the trailer. For reasons that will become apparent very soon. Oh yes, looking good. Bam. It's like when she says, do you want to talk? <laughs> You've already rolled over. The snoring. Done, you got shit to do tomorrow. Nailed. My work here is done. Just had to test it. It was smashed up pretty goddamn good, though, if I'm honest. I think it had like two tyres left, and that was about it. Just special. I mean, again, because of the relatively smallish bumper, lowish bumper, whatever. Was not too happy about it. Like, well, I need to repair it, don't I? I mean, it's just a goddamn horse of a vehicle, quite frankly. Never lets you down, me old loaf. Um, yeah, so brought a dolphin, repair dolphin. Gonna fix the uh, Transstar. See how much damage it's taken. Took a bit of a beating. So we'll fix that. I just say, look, loaf, no damage. I mean, what a goddamn professional. He doesn't waste repair points. He knows what he's doing. Even the dolphin. Took a bit of fixing. Anyway, going to go for a uh, water test. Now, basically, you've already seen that it floats. When I drive in the water, it just starts... Like, the front floats, it drives in very slowly. So, the snorkel is kind of pointless. And that's basically why I'm uh, attaching the dolphin behind me. I just disconnected it, as you can see. I stopped moving, pretty much. At the minute, I wasn't quite deep enough to where it would just stop dead. But, essentially, that's why I'm attaching the uh, yeah the dolphin. So I can just keep going in the water. i will see what would happen. And there's something else that... I mentioned this before, and then it... Anyway, I'll get into it. I mean, to the untrained eye, it appears like the dolphin is drowning. But... Like I say, he's a dolphin. There's a reason he got the name, the off-road dolphin. And, yeah. As you can hear, I'm still pressing the winch. And the dolphin is still pushing me forward. Even though its engine just drowned to the point where it's not even taking damage anymore. And there, I dis disconnected the winch. I stopped in the water immediately as soon as the dolphin stopped pushing me. That was it. Stuck the winch back on. Started moving again. I mean, at the minute, I'm basically like, my nose is swinging around to the left and I'm starting to head kind of that way <laughs> instead of towards the uh, towards the way I'd like to. But one problem at a time. But yeah, there's definitely no doubt. I mean, I disconnect the winch again. Well, I'm winching to the, like, that side of my vehicle to try and straighten it up. But as soon as I pressed the winch then, before I even started driving, the low start, uh, the dolphin, sorry, started driving forward, started pushing me forward, and I admit, to be honest, it's like, dolphin, do you know what personal space means? <laughs> You're a little bit closer, trying to sniff my neck or something, I'll recreate the scene from Ghost, I mean, go swimming, they said, what's the worst that could happen, they said, get humped by a dolphin, that's what, I mean, look at him, doing it on porpoise. But as you can see, though, the engine is broken, apparently, and there's no goddamn way this Transstar is towing a broken dolphin through the water like that. Like, and this is what I, was, I said it, uh, I can't remember which review, it might have even been the Loaf review, but I said at one point I was able to attach a winch to the dolphin and drive it underwater and make it to the other side, and then when I 
did it in that particular video, it didn't work for me, but as you can see, it definitely, I knew I wasn't tripping, I knew I did do it, and uh, yeah, I basically did the same thing then, I mean, obviously slightly different, I wasn't sat on top of it with a loaf, but I definitely officially drove the dolphin underwater, drowned it, and it was still fine. Eventually, I hit that barrier, turned round, and it's still turned into a slight dolphin commercial for the next minute, but I believe it was worth it. There was no way that Transstar was getting out there. I did try first, and I was only going to drag the uh, Transstar to here, really, but then I thought, oh, well, while I'm here, why not? And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results, to be honest. I mean, the Transstar wouldn't be helping a hell of a lot. Probably will now, now it's on land, but dragging it out of the water, going up a pretty damn steep hill. Got a van repair body, so yeah, can't really complain. Got here. Yeah, scared the shit out of that tree. What more could you ask for? As you can see now, though, because there's no power in the front, it just that inside rear axle lifts up off the floor, that bleeds a lot of the power, and it's just having none of it. I couldn't quite reach the dolphin with a winch, so I moved the dolphin back. And if you, I've noticed this before every now and then, when I get in the Transstar, as soon as I attach a winch, I just suddenly get like a grip bonus or something and it suddenly started motoring up the hill the winch didn't connect properly so it didn't even give me the option to start hoovering a winch and it didn't even really connect a winch and yeah that's another reason why tandem vehicles is pretty handy because I have noticed it before and this was just a pretty good example of it where yeah just by attaching the winch I seem to gain some kind of advantage even though I didn't actually even have a winch attached it's just like the game thought I did and it gave me a bit of a boost in preparation for being attached to another vehicle. I don't really know how to explain it, but just try it every now and then, even if all hope looks lost. Try and stick a winch on something, preferably another vehicle, and you get like a little boost. Uh, yeah, I mean, now I'm invading the uh, dolphin's personal space. So, in conclusion, like, I don't hate the truck or anything like that. It's just, it isn't very versatile, and it isn't the sort of thing you're going to pick to go off roading. Like, most things do better than it in the off-roading situations. It is pretty nice on the highway. It does tow trailers pretty nicely. And yeah, like things for like doing the Jeff Special, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, just drive it down the runway, wait until you're in eighth gear, just drop it in high, and you should get it a nice big speed boost. So there's, it's got its moments, and it's got its fun, fully upgraded, like absolutely, I mean, I've got horns on it, chrome parking lights, all sorts, 67 odd grand, so you're probably talking about 60, 65 grand uh, fully upgraded, which obviously is a hell of a lot, three times cheaper than the Derry Longhorn or something, and it still probably has more use than that, even if it's just for messing around. Stock, it's about, what, 32 grand, which, I mean, even when you find this for free, it's not a hell of a lot of money to make back. But yeah, if I mean, if money's tight and you're going through the game, you could sell it because you ain't going to find a lot of use for it. But as a toy, once you've got some money, it is good for just flying around down the roads and messing around every now and then. And yeah, that's about it. That's my conclusion. So uh, yeah, I hope that helps. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.